Spring Kids. Today we are going to be learning that God calls us his own. And we are going to be learning about this from Acts chapter 19 and Ephesians chapter 1. So isn't it amazing that God made everything in the universe and still knows each one of us personally? And he designed each one of us to be different, to be unique. He's such a creative God. We can find a great example of this in our fingerprints. No two people have the same fingerprints, not even twins. Our fingerprints are completely unique. And today we're going to learn some cool facts about our fingerprints as we think about how God made each one of us, loves us, and calls us his beloved children. We belong to him. So, did you know that God gave each one of us our very own fingerprints? Our fingerprints are 100% unique. That means no two fingerprints are exactly alike. The ridges on our fingertips give us the ability to grip things, such as a pen or basketball. Without fingerprints, things would slide right out of our hands. Our hands naturally produce oil, so when we touch things, we leave fingerprints behind. And our last fun fact is that some police officers and crime detectives can solve mysteries by finding fingerprints and matching them to the bad guys. Isn't that amazing? So now we're going to shift to our lesson for today, where we are going to learn more about the life of Paul. So God sent the Apostle Paul all over the place to tell people about Jesus. Paul was one of the first missionaries. What missionaries do you know of and where do they serve? Some of the places Paul visited included Antioch, Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, and Athens. And as he spoke to people about the good news of Jesus, many started to believe in the one true God. Many lives were changed. The people began to gather to worship God together. And as a result, many new churches began in cities throughout the land. Paul stayed with the new believers for a time. He taught them about Jesus, his love, and the very best way to live in response to God. But shortly after Paul left the new believers in Ephesus, the people began to have a hard time. Ephesus was a beautiful and wealthy city. The people in the city focused on beauty, sports, art, and success in business. The Ephesian people also worshipped lots of false gods. Statues and images of these false gods were everywhere. Because the new believers in Ephesus lived in a city with so many false gods, they were tempted to go back to their old ways of thinking. So God told Paul to write a letter to the people to remind them of their new identity in Jesus. In Paul's letter, he encouraged the Ephesians to rejoice because they had discovered the most amazing thing in the universe, salvation through Jesus. Paul also encouraged them to stay strong in their identity in Christ. But wait a second, what is an identity anyway? So let me show you an example. So what do you see? I'm wondering, did any of you describe the picture but not the frame? Why? Well, what's really important is the picture and not the frame. So, if we pretended that we're a framed picture, the frame would be how we look to others and what we do, the things on the outside. But the beautiful picture of who we are is on the inside. And the most important thing about who we are on the inside is not just about loving others and being a good friend. The most important thing is what God says about who we are. So let's turn in our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 and follow along. The Bible says God chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he adopted us through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. We have been chosen, redeemed, and adopted into God's family as his children. God has done all this because he loves us very much. He calls you his own. So let's read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 together. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Handiwork, that's the work of God the Creator. We're the handiwork, the creation of God, made by His hands and His breath. We're His masterpiece. We're created by the Master. God made each one of you with special care. He knew how you would look, walk, talk, think, feel, and more. God is the master artist, and you are his masterpiece. He calls you his own. 
We are God's children, created to do good works that he planned for us long ago. He made you, everything about you, for his special plan. That's exciting. And no one, nothing can change who you are as a child of God. No one can take away that place you have with him. God tells us to rejoice because we have been chosen by him, the God of all creation. We've been adopted by God into his family and you are his. Your identity isn't what you do or what you don't do. It's not your soccer skills, good grades, or ability to sing well. You are God's perfect masterpiece. You are his child. So now let's take some time to think more about what we learned today. So let's start by remembering what Paul did in Ephesus. What do you think? From our lesson, we know that Paul was there to teach them about Jesus, his love, and the very best way to live for God. My next question for you is what are some things that describe you on the outside? Could it be your hair color, your best subjects in school, or your favorite hobbies? What do you think? I want you to remember, though, that you are so much more than that. What are some words that describe the way God sees us? In Ephesians 1, verse 4 to 5, it says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. What does this verse say about how God sees us? What were some words that stood out to you? These are some great questions to help us really think about the truths of what we learned today. And I encourage you to take some time to reflect more and think about and discuss some of the other reflections questions you have with the people around you.